Hello everyone. Welcome to this Python tutorial on descriptive statistics with Python. Today we will be generating summary statistics, histogram, box plots, time series plots, cumulative frequency plots using Python. Today I will be using the Google Colab notebook for this because it's very convenient. You can directly access it from your browser. You don't need any extra software to be installed on your computer. And the data set I will be using is an air quality data set for Dhaka city. It contains the concentration values for different air pollutants for each day of 2020. So let's start. Before coding, we will need to import some Python packages. For uh, handling a big data set, we will need the pandas and numpy package. For uh, graphing and visualization, we will need Seaborn and Matplotlib packages. matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Since my dataset contains uh, date values and we will also need to export our outputs or as download, uh, downloadable files, we will need two more functions. Date time import date from Google our first action will be importing the data set i have already uploaded the data set in the files tab here but we will need to import the data set or the csv file into the code itself as a data frame import data set we will name it df for data frame since it's a csv file we will use the function read csv the file name is air data dot csv so let's see what does our data set contain. You can see that the first column is date and the other columns are different air pollutants. The missing values are recorded as NAN here. Let's start with our summary statistics. Python has a very useful function for this. We can use the describe function to get the summary statistics for the whole, da whole data set. Stat df dot describe. So let's see what this stat variable contains. So this stat variable is giving us the count, mean, standard deviation, minimum, first quartile, second quartile or median, third quartile and maximum values for each of the pollutants. But we might need some more statistics. What about variance or range or interquartile range? Uh, first, let's transpose, let's transpose our stat variable. And we want to add variance to another variance column. So here's our variance column. And we can determine the variance using the var function. We need 
we want to add a range Since we have already minimum and maximum columns, we will just subtract the minimum column from the maximum column. Interquartile range by definition is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. So we, we can see that already variance range and interquartile range columns are added here. So our summary statistics table is done. We can now export the table in an Excel using the following code. Uh, so it's already downloaded in my download folder. Let's move on to the scatter plot section. Since I have a lot of uh, big data set, uh, I want the scatter plots between each two variable combination possible. So it will be easier with if we use the pair plot function here. Scatter plot or pair plot. Scatter feed. Let's name it scatter feed.
and here's our big scatter plot or pair plot. We can see that we can see that each part contains a scatter plot with each variable. Let's go below, let's go down. So here's a scatter plot between PM10 and sulfur dioxide. This will be a scatter plot between PM10 and nitrogen oxide and so far. And so on. Let's find the box and whisker plot for a single variable. Box and whisker plots are necessary if we want to see the median, interquartile range and outliers in a single graph. Let's make a box plot of PM 2.5. But before you, we use PM 2.5, we will need to remove the NAND values from the data set because box and whisker plots can contain NAND values. It will show a very corrupted graph. So PM will first separate the column from the data frame. Then we'll remove the NAND values from here. And now we move on to the box plot function. And here is our box plot. You can see that uh, the orange line here is the median, the bottom and top lines are first quartile and third quartile and this shows the interquart uh, and the range, the outlier range. Let's go to histogram. This is the histogram of the PM 2.5 variable from our data set. This shows a very left skewed uh, distribution where majority of the values are on the lower side and there are very few values on the higher side. 
uh, when we when we use the hist function of python python automatically divides the data sets into 10 equal bins but of course uh, the bins the number of bins and the size of beans can be modified. There are there are different parameters for the hist function. We can also produce a cumulative frequency plot. The CDF plot. DF. PM10, PM2.5, this one will show the cumulative frequency plot of PM2.5 but it's to be noticed that the y axis shows proportion not actual values. This will be cumulative frequency proportion. Our last topic will be producing a time series plot of PM2.5 values. But before we go on to the time series plotting, we will need to convert our date column into date time variables. Series plotting. But before we go through the plotting, we need to convert our first column, the first date column, into date time variables. We will use the pandas to date time function to convert the date column into date time variables and then use the plot function of matplotlib to plot the time series plots. So here is the time series plots. Thank you for attending this tutorial. Uh, there is um, an interesting question you might like to answer after going through this tutorial uh, let's see uh, an interesting question will be how to find the frequency table from the histogram we have histogram and cumulative frequency plot we have done here we have used direct functions to use the plots but how will you salvage the frequency table and beans uh, being the values of classes and number of observations and cumulative frequency in python thank you for watching